those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin is so great, that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I need to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther towards Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people with <coughs> Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find fifty innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am of dust and ashes. What if there are five less than fifty innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only forty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the forty. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only thirty are found? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but thirty there. Still Abraham went on, Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than twenty? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the twenty. But he still persisted, Please, let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least ten there? He replied, For the sake of those ten, I will not destroy it. <coughs> the word of the Lord.
brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, <coughs> obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of the Lord. 
and they projected their disdain for their fathers unto God. It's very important that people don't bring with them baggage to their prayers. God is Father in a way that far surpasses any of the Father we've experienced here. And St. Augustine's father was a difficult man to live with before he converted. But then finally St. Augustine realized, you know, God is my Father, but He's the perfect Father. So we should keep that in mind and have confidence in Him. We need to pray, but certainly uh, it, it's not always easy, but we shouldn't let that stand as an obstacle. I mean, people will do all kinds of things, <coughs> sacrifice many things for purposes that aren't that important. For example, camping out in front of a store before it opens up to get to uh, be first in line for the sale, I mean, uh, sacrifice hours of sleep and so forth. Jesus used to do that. He would spend nights in prayer. So it's important to pray each day. I mean, we have to think about the fact that this is our vocation. We die. God, we pray God that we get to heaven. And we will be, be face to face with Him. We will be praying really for all eternity. That's what having communication and relationship with God is all about. It's heart to heart. It's mutual. He loves us more than we can possibly imagine. We love Him. We, we need to be open to Him. Sometimes people aren't open to God. They take Him for granted. I remember one young man telling me, he doesn't go to church anymore, he said, well, you know, God has never done anything for me. Well, have you ever looked in the mirror and where did you come from? Have you ever looked at the cross? Who is Jesus? Jesus reveals God to us. He is God, Son of God. Look what He did. Look what He's continuing to do. And this is what the Lord wants. He wants to save us. Not just in the past, but in the present. So, prayer opens us up to these things. Finally, a petitionary prayer. Well, are we allowed to pray for things from, from the Lord? The answer, of course, is yes. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we have petitions built into it. We pray for pardon. We pray for protection. We pray for daily bread. All of these things. We can pray for other things. But we shouldn't hold it against God if, it, if He doesn't answer our prayers the way we think He should. Because remember, He's our Father. He knows what's best for us. And um, sometimes He answers our prayers but we don't see it. Because He answers it in a way that we didn't expect Him to answer it. He also tells us that we must be persistent. Persistence means you know, not giving up, not quitting. But acknowledging that you know, we don't manipulate Him by a barrage of words. If I pray so many times, God has to do what I want Him to do. That's not a good mentality. It's rather He wants us to be patient, persistent, and to trust Him. The people who pray each day are people who trust God. Failure to pray is really a failure to trust Him. Do we trust Him? 